All right, y'all, we're live and back on the channel. Uh, I'm going to apologize for uh, the quality of my videos. Don't use an LG phone, obviously. They're horrible. Also, I never really have time to make good ones. Like, I, don't, I, I can only grab a couple minutes here and there, you know, between work and two kids and everything. So, this is called Spot the Fake Seiko Alpinist. And I'll give you a hint, it's the one on the right. And again, sorry about my phone, so I'm gonna make this brief, I'm gonna tell you what to look for. Number one, the uh, Seiko logo here on the, this is the uh, quote unquote real one, or original. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna tell you it's a little bit clearer, not as shiny as the fake one. Here on the fake one, it's not as clear, it's still well done, and it seems to be a little more shiny in the light. On this fake one, and I wish I had a macro lens, or could really zoom in there, but what you're gonna wanna look for on this stuff is these indices right here, they're kind of flat on the bottom, on the triangles, Whereas on here, they're a little more rounded. And in fact, I'll say the whole like shape of the uh, indices, whether it's a numeral or the triangles, is more rounded like in, you know, in this way. And then also, uh, you know, like sculpted on the sides. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, here on the fake one, the N in the north is kind of skewed to the right a little bit there at where it's better centered on this one. Um, I also want to say this green dial seems a little more bright in the light than this one. This one still looks good but I think it's kind of a darker green in the light and again my crap phone won't focus so I'm just trying to give you an idea what to look for with these things here. Um, I don't know that the bands matter too much, but you can tell this is the real one. This is the fake one here on my right here. These are darker. It seems kind of shinier. Or this one on the legit is more dull. Um, I looked at the sign crown, the S, on the side. I think this one on the real one is a little bit more clear, more clearly defined. Um, yeah, and then this one... Still pretty good, but it seems, you know, in person to be a little bit less defined. Here's a big kicker on the back. You'll notice this. And again, with my phone, you can't tell, so I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing with my naked eye here. Um, so basically, the laser etching on the back there, uh, again, this is the fake one. This is the real one. It's a lot more crisp on here, and I think that's probably one of the easiest ways to tell. On the back here, it's still good. All the I mean, it's a good fake. I've been staring at this for a week trying to figure it out. I had to legit pull the trigger, spend another 400 plus bucks on Amazon to get this. So this one I got eBay uh, for like 280 and I thought it was a really good deal. And obviously it turned out to be too good to be true. So this one's going back. Be careful y'all on eBay. If it seems too good to be true, it is. Thank God they have the return policy. This one's going back. This one I'll keep. Because, you know, this thing being such a good fake and hard to tell, I still want the Alpinist. It still looks really good to me, you know? It's a good looking watch, fake or not fake. It's, it's done, and this fake is done really well. Um, one other thing I'll point out to you here, the crown action on this one. When I unscrew this, it kind of pops out. Let's see if I can. It's like sort of springy. It, it pushes back. Whereas on this one, when I unscrew it, it's more, I'll just say, normal. It just kind of pulls out. So there's that. So yeah, I think there are fake Seiko Alpinists out there, guys. I mean, you know, I thought 280 was a kind of a too good to be true deal. Obviously it was, but I thought, oh, I'll take a punt. I mean, who's going to, 
you know, there's fake Rolex. There's obviously, Summer, uh, Submariners are the most faked watch of all time, probably. But, um, yeah, they're faking the Seiko Alpinist, too, it seems like. So, just be on the lookout for that. Um, again, the numerals on here, they're like a lot more flat across. More flat, sharper edges on the sides. Whereas the legit Alpinist here, it's more rounded. Maybe that helps. Maybe I can't have two watches in the shot. Sorry, I'm, you know, obviously I'm not a professional. I want to do some more of these videos, but I'm not going to try to do it like uh, all the other guys with the measurements and loom shots because my equipment is horrible. But I've got a lot to say about, you know, watches, the watch community in general, you know. Um, I think you're, you're looking at right here a real good example of why homage watches exist. Because when you pay, I don't care if you pay, you know, full price or $10 for this thing, you feel kind of ripped off when you figure out it's a fake, you know? And I would say same thing for like a Rolex. It's, it's better to pay full price and get the legit deal than to take a punt on what could possibly be a fake. And really the best way to avoid it all, if you can't afford a real one and you think you might be buying a fake, just... That's why the market for homage watches exists. I can't stand the haters that, oh, homage watches are fake, whatever. Like, first of all, no one in real life is ever going to point that out to you at Walmart or Costco, okay? It's only when you post your pictures on the, on the Instagrams and the, and the Facebooks, you know, people are like, oh, what a shitter watch and, you know, buy the real thing. Well, you know, I don't have 10 grand to buy a Submariner. If you uh, think I should have a Submariner... Buy it for me. I'd love to have one. That being said, don't do fake watches. Homage watches, okay. Fake watches, no go. This is a fake Seiko Alpinist. This is the real deal. I mean, even the movement, I would say, the, the, the motion on the, the second hands, the second hand is, you know, it's, I can't tell the difference. So it could even be the same movement in there. But, uh, yeah, this one's going back right here. This one will stay in the collection. Because I think with these Sarbs, this is something else I'd like to make a video on. I think they'll be like some of those classic Seikos from the 60s and 50s that were probably, you know, a couple bucks back in the day when they were new. But now they're classics and they're going for, you know, some of like a $1,000. Like 6105. Seiko 6105, good example. Regular money you know, 30, 40 years ago, now a couple thousand. And I think, you know, possibly looking at the same situation with the Sarb line, the 035, the 033, this is the 017. You know, they're just future classics, and it's kind of a way that I think you can get in on these watches at the low end and sort of speculate if you don't have money to buy, you know, some of the Rolex or some of the other big name brands that'll be worth a lot in the future. Uh, by the way, guys, I'll be uh, trying to get, in the next 12 months, a Tudor Black Bay 58. I absolutely love that watch. If I get that, I'll probably sell off some of my others because I won't need so many sub-like watches. But that Black Bay 58 with the 39 millimeter, 3500 right now. Future classic, just like these, will be worth more. So, and I'm not saying I buy watches too as an investment, but I've flipped enough watches that if, if I do decide in the future, because you never know, you at least want to get most of the money back, right? So that's kind of my perspective on it. I can do a video on that some other time, but yeah. Fake Seiko Alpinist, real Seiko Alpinist. Another thing I would say real quick as a side note, I think the sunburst on this is a little more intense than on this one. And then also, and it's hard to tell, but yeah, just those indices aren't right. And I'm trying to use this crummy phone to give you an idea. Let me get this one to focus. Please. I don't know what I need to do to make this thing focus. And again, sorry, but if I can... Yeah, it doesn't do it. LG phones, y'all. Stay away from them. I'll be looking to up my game in the future, obviously, if I want to continue making these videos. But if you watched it, 
Thanks for spending about 10 minutes with me today. And um, if you have any questions as far as maybe something else I might have missed, what you want to look out for with these watches, you know where the comments section is, y'all. Peace.